yesterday as I read today's gospel, I remembered a phrase, something that a friend said to a group of us that has stayed with me all these years. The circumstances are a little hazy, but I remember we were sitting around talking, probably trying to solve the problems of the world, or at least the problems in our small corner of the world, when the conversation was going in the wrong direction. That's when one guy said, hey, stay in the light. That's pretty good advice coming from a guy in his early 20s, someone who, like St. John, understood how any of us can drift from the twilight even into the darkness of this world, and sometimes into the darkness of our own interior lives. We might begin a conversation. We might start watching television or surfing the net, or just go about our day, and we have the best of intentions when something, something externally or even internally, tempts us to go in the wrong direction. It could be mentally, physically, or spiritually. Well, to lengthen my friend's admonition, that's when we need to stay in the light of Jesus. For as the gospel reminds us, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. The gospel of John uses light and darkness to illustrate good and evil, what is of God and what is of the devil? And John refers to Jesus as the light, just as Jesus is called the truth. By linking, linking Jesus to the light and the truth, we're reminded that when we stay close to Jesus each day, we're able to see, and we're able to understand the difference between right and wrong, even in complex situations. And because Jesus is the truth, he allows us to avoid deception either from others or from the ways that we might be tempted to deceive ourselves. When we stay close to Jesus, it's then that his light shines into our hearts and into our minds, allowing us to see clearly the good in life and then choose it. Even when we're tempted, even when we're tempted to compromise our beliefs, beliefs that are rooted in the natural and the divine law, and for the times that we have drifted, the light of Jesus offers us a beacon of hope. The light of Jesus is a guide to return to living the life that we're made to live. For each one of us is made in the image of God. And through our baptism, through the baptism we received, we are temples of the Holy Spirit. That's the great news. And it means that no matter what we face, or how far we've drifted, that we're made to live and to stay in the light of Jesus. So if you find yourself, your family, your friends, your coworkers, or anyone going in the wrong direction, give them this simple but powerful, hope-filled message today to stay in the light of Jesus. And you'll never go wrong. Staying in the light of Jesus is what we're doing right here at this Mass. It's what we do when we pray. It's what we do when we go to confession and in the many grace-filled moments that the Lord breaks through and wants to shine his light into our hearts and minds. It's up to us to stay with him.